Most grains contain anti-nutrients like phytates or oxalates that bind to minerals and impair absorption in the body. Some of them contain lectins that can cause gut damage. Through fermentation and proper preparation methods that all indigenous groups practice, we can reduce this anti-nutrient content and make it a healthy source of calories. It's important to note that grains are used as a caloric source of nutrition. If you look at the vitamin profile, they really don't have a significant amount of fat-soluble vitamins, and they really fall short in that perspective. The interesting thing about grain preparation in indigenous groups is the sheer variety of how they prepared their grains. What's more interesting is that if an indigenous group did not prepare their grains properly, they would suffer from skeletal problems, rotting teeth, cavities, generally denaturing of physical health. So these grains, this grain consumption, replaced wild plant consumption in the past several thousand years, as well as some animal calories. It's much easier to get calories from harvesting grains than it is to hunt more animals or harvest wild plant foods. The reason we're talking about oats today is because they shine above every other grain in the sense that they actually have a reasonable fat content. It's more than three times higher than wheat. If we look back at Weston Price's research, a dentist in the early 1900s who studied people still subsisting off of an indigenous lifestyle, the Scottish people used oats as a significant portion of their calories and they were in excellent health. Now, the highlight of oats is their fat content, but they fall short in regards to B vitamins compared to most other grains. They do have an adequate amount of vitamin B1 and folate. They have a decent amount of vitamin E. And if you look at the mineral profile, it's actually better than most other grains, but we're not really looking at B vitamin intake when we're consuming grains. Now, the main anti-nutrient concern in oats is phytic acid. They are much higher in phytic acid than other grains. Phytic acid is neutralized by the phytase enzyme in food in order to release this phytase enzyme that occurs in grains, you have to soak it in an acidic medium. Now, even if you soak the oats in an acidic medium, the phytase content in oats isn't particularly high. So the best way to actually reduce the phytic acid content in oats is a prolonged fermentation, usually about a week. Oats also contain alkyl resorcinols, which have been shown to damage red blood cells in animals. They contain alpha amylase inhibitors, a protein enzyme inhibitor, which means that you probably shouldn't be consuming oats with a high protein meal. It would be better to consume it in the context of fat and other carbohydrates because if you consumed protein with this meal, it's safe to say that digestion might be impaired and you could cause some sort of bacterial imbalance in the gut or dysbiosis. These alpha amylase inhibitors are responsible for a lot of the allergic reactions that people have to certain grains. Oats also contain lectins, the most damaging anti-nutrient associated with grains, in particular legumes. It's correlated strongly with leaky gut and it can also cause a lot of inflammation because of how it binds to cells, just a lot of cellular inflammation in the body. Fermentation certainly reduces phytic acid and lectins. Other preparations such as sowins that we will talk about in a second also likely reduce the other anti-nutrient content to an amount that wouldn't be too harmful. Okay, so here we have four types of oats. The left is the least processed and the right is the most processed. So these are the least processed form of oats that most people have access to. These are called groats. This is essentially like a wheat berry where you take the stalk, you thresh it, you blow air through it. This is the raw, unprocessed form of oats. If you take these oats and you grind them up in a blender to make them maybe in like quarters or thirds, you get steel cut oats. So these are still raw. They're just broken up a little bit to allow them to cook and soak quicker. The one I'm missing is Scottish oats. And Scottish oats are steel cut oats. They're just pureed into a powder. And this is a preparation that a lot of the Scots used to do. Here we have rolled oats. Rolled oats are the groats. They steam them and then they roll them. So this cooks a lot quicker. And then here we have the quick oats. The, the quick oats are cooked, dried, 
and heat it a bit more. Uh, in regards to what I suggest people do is you want to buy the original form of the oat. I think steel cut oats are okay as well and Scottish oats would be fine, but you definitely don't want to buy any cooked version of the oats because we need to ferment them first. There is a traditional Celtic dish called sowins. They would take the oats, grind them into a powder, and then ferment them in water for about a week until they turn sour. They would then pour the water off, keep the water, and discard the solids, and then in this oat water, they would let that sit for another two days, and the sediment that went to the bottom of the oat water was considered the most nutritious form of oats. They would take this sediment, they would boil it for 10 minutes, add a little bit of salt, and serve it with cream or very high fat milk. So indigenous groups prepared foods in a variety of different ways. That is just one specific preparation. There are likely dozens of different ways that you can harvest food, prepare it, and cook it. And not one of these methods is necessarily the best. The one thing for certain is that you want to reduce the anti-nutrient content as much as possible. And there is always some fermentation present when preparing grains. So for a lot of grains, if the phytase content is high, we can just soak them overnight in an acidic medium to activate the phytase that breaks down the phytic acid. In the case of oats, since they don't have a lot of phytase, it would be ideal to soak them for at least a week until they sour, especially if you're consuming oats frequently. What we're going to do in this video is just soak the oats overnight in an acidic medium. I think that's fine if you consume oats maybe once a week, a couple times a month. And this is akin to sourdough bread. If you took wheat and you fermented it overnight with yeast, you would break down some of the anti-nutrients, but you wouldn't do it super effectively. If you took that same wheat and made a sourdough culture for two, three, four weeks and did an extensive two day fermentation, that's where you would have an ideal version of the grain preparation. In regards to the anti-nutrients we're reducing, as I said earlier, the phytic acid and the lectins can be reduced by soaking in an acidic medium slightly. But what we really want to do is sour the oats. And I think that preparation of sowins, where you discard most of the oats and keep the water that essentially is like oat nutrient extract, that would be ideal from an inflammatory perspective. Here I have some apple cider vinegar. You could also use lemon juice, any other vinegar. The way to do this naturally would to actually just be to mix the water with the oats and let it ferment for two to three weeks. What will happen is the wild yeast in the air will start fermenting the grain, but that takes far longer than using something acidic right off the bat. So here I have one half cup of steel cut oats. I'm going to mix it with one half cup of water. And then we're going to put one tablespoon of vinegar. Now I'm going to leave this overnight. I believe the minimum is seven hours. Uh, I've actually let this go several days up to a week and it's perfectly fine. So our oats have soaked overnight. This is one half cup of groats with one half cup of water and one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I'm going to add another half cup of water. And if you notice before the oats absorbed a decent amount of liquid, so if you let this go for two, three, four, five, six days, they will continue to soak up water and dry out. So you might just want to add a little bit of water every day. So all we're really going to do is boil this for like 20, 30 minutes until the oats are tender. And then we can add butter, fruit, whatever seasoning we like. Uh, we will be adding salt about 10 minutes into cooking. Uh, if you have rolled oats or quick oats or processed oats, you can add salt sooner. So the oats have been boiling for about 10 minutes. I'm going to add my pinch of salt. Uh, what's interesting is humans started consuming salt when we started consuming more plant foods, much less necessary on a, a high meat diet. So about 15 minutes into cooking, the amount of water in the pot is reduced from evaporation and absorption in the oats. You want to make sure just to stir this pretty much the whole time because the bottom will burn very easily. I probably added about another cup and a half of water throughout this cooking process. So the whole oats definitely take a bit longer to cook so we're evaporating a lot more water. So we've been boiling the oats for pretty much half an hour constantly stirring them. Uh, I think a vegan would have passed out uh, by now. So now I'm going to add about half a stick of butter. And what I usually do is for every cup of oats I do a stick. So 
since we have half a cup of oats, we're doing half a stick. And I'm gonna mix this butter in to cool down the oats a little bit. If you wanted to, you could probably boil these oats with milk if you wanted to increase the nutrient density. Uh, I just don't really like boiling animal products for really long periods of time, if they're expensive especially. But I don't see anything wrong with doing something like that. If I had raw milk, I'd probably actually make this with raw milk and then add some more butter or cream. I would say like a tablespoon or two of fat per serving is good. Maybe even three tablespoons of fat per serving. I don't want to do too much. I think this would be delicious with nothing in it, but with the butter makes it amazing. Here I have some Ceylon cinnamon. There's cassia cinnamon, there's Ceylon cinnamon. I think there's a couple other different ones. Ceylon cinnamon is a bit more expensive, but it's the quality stuff. Uh, there's an anti-nutrient or a substance in cinnamon. I can't remember the name of it, but Ceylon cinnamon has very small amounts of it. So I'm just gonna add maybe yeah, like a tablespoon of cinnamon. But I do have some raw honey and yeah, this oatmeal is probably too hot. It's gonna heat the honey, but I'm only gonna add about two tablespoons for flavor. I would say one tablespoon of honey per serving is a bit overkill. So maybe like three half to three quarters of a tablespoon of honey per serving is good. So I'll just add about two tablespoons. So since you guys know I am a bit of a carnivore, I do not participate in such activities. So I have my lovely assistant here off camera. She does not think she is too presentable today. So she is going to try it off camera. What I will say is, although I added a little too much honey to this, she has one hell of a sweet tooth. So I don't think she's gonna think it's too sweet. Although if I tasted it myself, I'd probably get a cavity in about 15 minutes. So uh, would you like to, so this is the oats with butter, cinnamon, honey, and I think that's it, yeah. I would love to try it. This year, please. It's beautiful looking. Oh, it looks like, mine looks like slop, what do you mean? I think I put, no, I only put like two tablespoons in there. Is it too sweet? It's a little sweet, but it's good. So I, I only added about a tablespoon and a half of honey. So you really only need probably even like two teaspoons of honey. Uh, so that has probably 20 grams of sugar in the whole bowl, 10 grams of sugar per serving, which isn't too much considering what most kids eat every morning in cereal. But I think like five grams of sugar worth of honey would be plenty. Um, is it, It's too sweet? Yeah, it's a little too sweet. So uh, d definitely taper down the, the honey. I mean, my dad will probably eat it. He doesn't want to have a, <laughs> want to have a sweet tooth. You might be thinking, Frank, that was awfully laborious to make some oatmeal. And I mean, yes, it's about a week of fermentation. It's half an hour of grunt work on the stove. And that doesn't include harvesting and milling the oats or the creation of the tools used to harvest or mill those oats. So how did these indigenous groups get enough calories without burning all this energy? The human body has a threshold. If you exercise for an hour, you might burn X amount of calories, but if you exercise for 10 hours, you don't burn 10 times the amount of calories. So there will be a point where you put in extra work and your body does not need extra calories. And that seems to be the theme with these agriculturalists. They would be very active for 10, 12 hours a day, but they still obtain enough calories from these foods. So it works. I mean, a vegan probably wouldn't have the energy to do it. Uh, so what are you going to do? And for any of you soy boys out there that are saying, Frank, you don't know anything. You don't have any intelligence. Have you seen any other vegan on YouTube make a video this detailed about oats? I would be pleasantly surprised. And if you do, let me know so I can stop wasting my time making grains and other foods and focus on more interesting stuff like uh, getting some more unusually attractive ex-vegan girls that you guys like, things like that, you know, more productive stuff. So, so if you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and share the video if you can. If you want to check out my Amazon shop, I will put some oats on there. I'll see if there's some stuff on Amazon that you can check out. I also have a bunch of other healthy grains you can consume in the grain section. If you guys want to check out my hygiene products, we got the Slick Rick hair today with the hair pomade. I got my lip balm on. I got my curly white teeth from my tooth powder and I'm wearing deodorant. Uh, don't have my moisturizing cream on at the moment, but it does have vitamin D3. I usually use that every single morning. 
So that's on frank-defile.com as well as my Etsy shop. If you guys would like to follow me on Instagram, I'm doing live streams every day for an hour while I lose my mind sitting in New York City traffic. And I post silly stuff on Twitter, usually arguing with other carnivore dieters because I think I'm doing it better than all of them. But that's that's a different story. So if you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one consultations, maybe you are a brain-dead vegan that needs me to explain this very, very detailed and kind of spell it out for you, you can send me an email, frankatofano at gmail.com, or contact me through the consultation form on my website.